Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Happy Tuesday to you and commissioners. It is already the month of November. Ooh. Today is November the 2nd, Tuesday, and it is shortly after the 10 a.m. hour. We're here at the Assembly Hall, 901 Main Street, in the heart of Old Town Conyers. We're calling our meeting to order this morning. Uh, we've got a pretty robust schedule today and asking that we try to stay focused and on track. I'm going to do my part. Um, at this time, Director Rulich. So, Mr. Chairman, I just want to give a brief overview of how today's meeting will flow. So, this morning, um, we'll call the uh, Finance Director up and he'll give a presentation of the proposed 2022 budget. Then we will open up the floor to uh, the public hearing portion for public comment relative to the proposed 22, 2022 budget. We'll close out that session um, and then roll into the work session. Outstanding, outstanding. Director Lewis. And as Director Lewis is making his way to the podium, I might add, Commissioners, uh, as we all know, this is our CFO's first run at the Rockdale County budget uh, with this with the assistance of Terminus uh, Financial Group has been uh, outstanding and uh, I'm sure he's got more to add. But next year, uh, Executive Director Lewis will be completely at the wheel on his own. <laughs> and so he'll be riding the horse by himself next year, but he's got a little help this year, but we're so glad. Director Lewis, tell us where we are. Uh, absolutely, good morning, Chair. Commissioner Williams, Commissioner Washington. Good morning. Um, as you mentioned, a uh, great deal of assistance went into completing this year's budget, not only from Terminus, but a number of um, internally, um, I have to acknowledge the efforts of Executive Director Holmes, as well as all the directors in terms of making, coming up with the proposed budget for FY22. As some guiding principles, uh, our vision statement for our, our, our as we approach this body of work. Uh, Rockdale is perfectly positioned community with a rock solid approach, dedicated to excellence in customer service, quality of life, and global economic development. Our guiding values and objectives are educated workforce, thriving businesses, sustainability, community, suitable quality of life. In terms of the agenda for this presentation, I'll briefly go over the budget process and calendar, um, budget overview, as well as some summary reports. Budget highlights for this year. No tax increases, no use of reserve to balance the budget, more focus on the use of technology, more focus on COVID vaccination, more focus on economic and infrastructure development. As a review, our budget calendar, our budget process for this year began in June when we kicked off our budget uh, sessions. Um, in August, we had the departmental presentations. Uh, today, November, uh, we have our proposed, uh, re releasing the proposed budget. And in December, we will have the budget adoption. Next page. Our general overview for this year, our FY22 proposed budget comes in at 83.1 million. Um, our operating revenues and expenses, and thus leaving us with no surplus or deficit. 83.1 million is the total budget for FY22. A quick review of some of the revenues associated with the FY22 budget. Our taxes come in at 64% of our revenue. Our host revenue coming in at 25%. Uh, char charges from services coming in at 6%. Uh, fines and forfeitures at 3%, our ARPA calculation at 1%, and licenses and, per and permits coming in at 1%. In terms of our general expenditures, <clears throat> overall, um, uh, three major areas of our expenditures are salaries coming in at 65%, our uh, purchases and contractor services coming in at 22%, supplies at 9%, and our indirect costs, uh, which consists of our occupancy costs and our utilities, that are not directly tied into one department, but overall uses by the county as a whole, indirect costs coming in at 4%. If we look at our county services by uh, categories, 
Uh, public safety comes in at 49% of our expenditures. General budget coming in at 29%. Uh, court services at 11%. Cultural and recreation at 7%. And transportation coming in at 4%. Within the category of public safety, it's made up of our sheriff's office, coming in at 25.2 million, which is 61% of the expenditures for public safety. Uh, fire, and fire rescue coming in at 28%. E911, 6%. EMA at 3%. And a combination of EMS, coroner, and animal services coming in at 2% combined. For our general government, the top three for our general government are maintenance at 24%, finance coming in at 22%, technology services coming in at 17%, and the remainder of those items coming in at less than 10% of the total budget for general government. Court services, um, tw our clerk of courts coming in at 27%, our district attorney coming in at, at uh, 21%. Juvenile court, 13%. Public defender's office coming in at 10%. And the remaining coming in at under 10% in totality. For cultural and recreation budget, our parks is coming in at 65% uh, at 3.5 million. Libraries at 1 million, which is 19% of the cultural and recreation budget, and senior services coming in at 16%. Transportation is in a category is to its own at 3.6 million. So some of our comparisons of where we fall in our proposed FY22 budget uh, in relation to some of the previous years. As you can see, in FY21, we come in at 81.4 million. FY22, we're coming in at 83.1. And please look, note the other years as well. FY19 and FY20 is also on this chart. If we continue our analysis by looking at it by category, um, <clears throat> in our comparison to our previous years, um, we were able to. Uh, Keep our FY22 public safety is still at the lead of our expenditures at 40.7 million, um, a slight increase from the previous year, as well as general government at 24.3, which also is a slight increase from FY21. Some key events to re recall in regards to the overall budget process. November 2nd, today is our public hearing with the work session to follow. November 9th is the first reading of the appropriations ordinance, and December 14th is the second reading and adoption of the appropriations ordinance. Thank you. Commissioners, any questions or comments for Executive Director Lewis? No, <clears throat> not at this time. No. I just would like to compliment you on the presentation. Um, it's clear. I love the graphs plus the dialogue plus the text. Um, so thank you for doing that. Thank you. Like as I said, a great deal of work went into completing this year's presentation. Thank you, Executive Director Lewis. Let me just say, uh, Commissioners, that uh, I think what really put us ahead of the curve this year is the fact that we started our financial and budget process at the beginning of the year uh, with a deep dive with our capital improvement um, uh, review. We did several days over at J.P. Carr, if you all recall. Mm -hmm. And then we did another deep dive about mid-year looking into this budget. So uh, again, um, hats off to Executive Director Lewis, as well as uh, Mac Underwood and, and David Corbin and the team from Terminus, along with all of our executive staff who were really all hands on deck. <laughs> Uh, every office turned into an annex of the finance department, uh, legislative affairs, the chief, chief of staff, uh, talent management, general services, all turned into uh, a wing, an extension of finance. And uh, it is um, looking at the numbers, where we are now, and looking at the past, uh, the previous years, um, I feel good about um, how we've been trending all things considered with this pandemic. 
Uh, as all of you all know, that public safety will always remain my number one and top priority. And that includes both the Sheriff's Office and the Rockdale County Fire and Rescue, uh, 911 and EMS uh, uh, and EMA. We are, uh, um, we're moving in the right direction. There's no um, greater concern for county or city officials than public safety in any community. If any of you all are watching the local news, you know that is the hottest topic in Metro Atlanta as relates to today's mayor's race, uh, public safety and how they're gonna keep the citizens safe. Um, every now and then, there's a little something something that happens here in Rockdale County. But we're not like some of the other counties. You know, we're not like some of the other cities where every night on the local news you know what county is involved or where the action is taking place. So I hats off to Sheriff Levitt and the Sheriff's Office and Chief Gene Wilson over at the City of Conyers Police Department and all of our men and women in uniform to include, again, Fire and Rescue, our 911 operators and dispatchers who don't get a lot of limelight, and certainly the decision by this board commissioners to establish an emergency management agency led by Director Dan Morgan. Um, we are in a good place, in a good space uh, in Rockdale County when it comes to public safety. Um, next year, uh, we will be moving in a totally different direction and um, I think it's going to be prudent upon this board to make sure that we do exactly what we did this year with this budget process. So uh, again, I want to thank everybody who was involved. Uh, we've got a few more meetings to go as stated with the calendar and it gives myself and the commissioners an opportunity to process what's been presented to us and we've got a couple of more weeks before we make a final decision. So. Thank you so, so much. So I just did a quick calculation. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the budget last year was 81.4, and this year it's 83.1. But we have 2.6 something ARPA funds. And so I subtracted those ARPA funds from our budget this year, which means, um, which leaves us with 80.3. So if without those ARPA funds, our budget is lower than it was last year. Does that make sense? It, it makes a lot of sense, and it's, it's really good that you mentioned that, Commissioner, because also without the opera funds, we would really be in a different situation um, operating-wise, and I'll just leave it there mm -hmm. for right now. So uh, next year, uh, we don't anticipate opera funds. You know, opera funds is like, you ever uh, been getting ready to put your, your pants in the laundry in the, in the washing machine and you check your pockets one last time you pull out a $5 bill or a $20 bill, it's that unexpected money or you go home this afternoon and there's a check in the mail and you didn't expect it and voila it showed up right on, I've never had money to show up not on time, I always needed it whenever it showed up, so that's what opera, that's how opera so we didn't know three, four years ago there was going to be CARES Act money we didn't know three, four years ago there was going to be opera funds now, with this administration in D.C. right now, we don't know what else is coming forward. All of us are paying attention to what's happening there right now. There may be another windfall. We don't know. We can't operate and set the county budget on a maybe. <laughs> we have to look at tax dollars that are coming in, our position on whether we accept those funds, do a rollback, and plan accordingly. <laughs> The delivery of services will never stop as the county continues to grow. However, if we move forward, as we move forward, if we do another rollback, then there's going to be an impact on personnel and delivery of services. There's no polished, clean up way to put it. It is what it is. And uh, I think we've done, this board has done an outstanding job, uh, again, through the last 22 months delivering services at a very uh, high standard here in Rockdale County. And, and again, those opera funds have served in, in several ways to make sure we keep the lights on in this county. Commissioner? Well, I don't, I want to make it clear that this budget alone has impacts on personnel and um, possible um, things that we've done in the past that we might not be able to do in the years for moving forward because we did take a rollback. Mm -hmm. um, we have 
listened to the, the citizens, we have understood that we're in a pandemic and we have governed ourselves in that vein, but it absolutely had a severe consequence on revenues and things that we might need to do moving forward. Mm -hmm. um, this mm -hmm. budget has um, some personnel ramifications that we're gonna have to look at and I myself personally want to look at other things that we've done this year so that we won't have to be in the same position next year, which means that we might have to not do some of the, the fun things that we've done this year or mm -hmm. some of the other things that we've done this year so that we can make sure that um, we are maintaining personnel and we are delivering services because I myself personally believe that um, all the extra has to cut out, be cut out because we have to deliver the services to the communities first. And then, and, and in order to do that, we have to have the personnel in place to do that. Um, and so my first goal in this, in this 2022 budget and moving forward will be to protect um, jobs so that we can have an exemplary delivery of services. And if that means that we have to cut other things that we've done traditionally out of this budget, then that's where I will be um, going for in this budget cycle. But I don't want people to think that everything is, is rosy in this budget because it's not. Because we have to make hard decisions because we made the very hard decision not to do, um, to roll back, to take the rollback rate. And that is, in fa that is also going to affect what we can do for our personnel in the future. Mm -hmm. That means that we, we're still at below market rate in our, in our pay rate. Mm -hmm. We did a market study. We're not going to be able to, to um, get people up to market rate this year. And that's disheartening. But we listened to the public. And we understand still we're in a pandemic. So we took the rollback rate. So we can't do a lot of the things that we traditionally would can do, what would have liked to have done, right. because we are have to really um, be bare bones this year. And I need for everybody to understand that this right. is a hard budget. Okay. I, I really appreciate all of your comments and your your spot on. Mm -hmm. um, in, in the part about not being able to do the competitive market study for our employees is very critical in this uh, workforce climate. Uh, right now, everywhere in town has a sign that says help wanted and now hiring. However, in the first quarter of next year, some of that is going to change. Once people get past the holidays, I think we're going to see a different trend. We're already, before the pandemic, was competing trying to find qualified, competent talent before the pandemic. Now people have a lot more options. And um, it's really going to make it tough when we're not able to keep our employees at market rate because they're going to look at what they're getting paid here in Rockdale County. They're going to compare it with other uh, entities, counties, and cities. And people have got to bring the food home and put it on the table. And they're going to make a decision. My prayer is that we don't lose qualified folks here in Rockdale County who's been here to help us keep moving this county forward. But there is an impact, and I, I couldn't have said it any better than Commissioner Washington in terms of making the decision to listen to our citizenry regarding the rollback. We cannot continue to move in that same direction. Or well, there will be, as she stated, an impact on the delivery of services. There, there's just no way around it. The other thing is, um, people, I would like the citizens to understand that as every as commodities increase for you individually, they increase for the county. I remember um, at a time last year when both Director Sanders and I are both looking for gas. She's I'm looking for it for my truck, but she's looking for at it for it for a fleet of everybody in the county. And so the same, just because we are a county, doesn't mean that the cost of running the county are not increasing. Papers going up, pencils going up, uh, uh, everything is is the the cost of running the county is increasing. Gasoline's going up, the cost of maintaining the buildings are going up. Everything is going up. So when you tell us that your individual cost of living is going up, 
the cost of running the county is also going up, so we have to take those things into consideration also. And I'm done with my preaching <laughs> for today. I will be passing the, um, the, collection. the collection plate around. <laughs> <laughs> Commissioner Williams, any other, any other comments? No. Thank you, Director Lewis. Thank, Thank you, you to everybody. Uh, we'll continue this process as we make our end of the year closeout here. Director yes. Rulich. So, Mr. Chairman, we will now open up the floor to public comment relative to the proposed 2022 budget. I have one here from Ms. Corliss Turner. Okay. But it's the only one that I've received this morning. All right. All right. Come on up, Ms. Ms. Turner. Thank you, Chief. Thank you, Director Elledge. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I'm sorry it's noon, but I decided I needed to come here to speak. I hear you keep saying uh, one thing this gentleman said was no uh, tax increase. What tax tax is he talk, speaking of? And then the other thing I hear you both keep saying about the rollback, the rollback, as if are you speaking of the rollback with the millage? Um, because um, as we stated before, and I believe that you all have gotten CARES Act and you're expecting more CARES Act. My question is where are you expecting this money to come from, the same citizens with the millage rate? Have you ever thought about bringing commercial businesses in, in here? ARC said that it was 67% in Rockdale that lost their job or were furloughed. If you bring some commercial business in, in here, that's some tax dollars which will relieve the burden on the common everyday citizen. You, you, you keep building all of these, these homes and, and, and these uh, townhouses and apartments, and that's not bringing money in. It's bringing people in, but it's not, people need jobs. So it's, it's, it's like we both, it's a win-win. The county gets more tax money to bring some business in here, and then people get jobs. And I think that's what we need to be thinking about and thriving for. Some things we have to put on hold and wait till we, we, we come out of this situation we're in. And I just don't, don't, don't agree that you're gonna overcrowd the schools, the, the streets are gonna, the traffic's gonna get worse. I mean, think outside the box. Where can we get some money from other than from the same people, from the same citizen? Yes, I know it's increasing for you all. But you, you all, I'm not saying you individually, but the county has more money that, that they get from the government and can ask for more to offset some of this cost. But if Rockdale County is the best county in Georgia, you have to help the citizens. You got to make us feel like the burden's not on us. It sounds like in advance you're already speaking that you're not going to do a rollback. Now, what taxes is he talking about? Is he talking about military taxes? What, what taxes is he speaking of? So, Ms. Turner, I'll, I'll, I want to start off. Let me just say this too. You, you talked about unexpected money. You didn't expect this, this CARES Act money. And then I left my phone, had notes in there. But I understand. I'm trying to you know, understand what's going on here in the county. And I think I need to get, get involved because these are my dollars that you're spending, and I feel like I have a say-so on how you spend my money. And I think we need to live within our means. If we can't do it now, just maintain what you have. But you, you said that you, somebody mentioned about um, you're not able to bring the wages up, I guess, for the employees to the market level. Well, if you get more money in here, everybody's going to benefit, more commercial businesses. Covington is bringing what? Amazon? Why do these companies don't want to move to, to uh, Conyers? Are you out there opening up the doors to, to them? Because Conyers have, has plenty land where they can move, you know, build something. Or empty spaces where, where they can, you know, renovate it and, and, and create jobs. That's the main thing. And that's who you should be, I think that's who the county should be focusing on, the people the ones that's paying the taxes, because it's our money that you're spending. And I'm gonna take my seat. Thank you, thank you, Ms. Turner. And as, as always, I wanna say thank you for all that you do on behalf of the citizens here in Rockdale County. Uh, I'm gonna to yield to Commissioner Washington. Uh, she's put a lot of hard work and effort in the area of economic development when it comes to bringing in businesses and rooftops and how that works and plays out together. Commissioner, I will just say this. It does sound like there needs to be a little clarity on this term as part of understanding a couple of things because I think she missed the part about us listening to the citizens, but go ahead. Right. Um, go right ahead. 
Um, a couple of things, and I would like to have the opportunity to speak with you offline because we do, economic development is, it's not just a matter of saying we want Amazon come here or we want Facebook. They have to, we have to have the facilities available and the space available and the infrastructure available and all of those things have to, it's, everything has to align for some, a, a business entity to to want to be here or to select Rockdale County. A lot of times when we, when they're selecting places, they, um, they're doing a blind search or, or things like that. But one of the things that um, we don't talk about, and I didn't realize until I started getting so involved in economic development, is that rooftops do mean a lot. Um, the, the, um, the economic, the, the ability of people to have disposable income, um, the kind of housing, the demographics of the people that live here, that plays a huge, uh, that's a huge portion of economic development. So part of us um, bringing in certain housing is helping the economic development part, part, part also. Um, I work with the Conyers Rockdale Economic Development Council. I am the vice president. And I just left the Development Authority meeting this morning where we are actively coming up with an economic development plan that will um, put us on a, a better, better pedestal. But a lot of that does include housing and creating housing not just for um, affluent, but for people, working people, the working class, we want to have, we have to have housing for school teachers, for firefighters, for um, all, any uh, county employees and things like that. So all of that makes a difference. Um, we did do the rollback rate this year and last year. So out of the three entities in the county, we are the only ones that did two rollback rates. But what that does is that limits our income and that limits the, our ability to do other things like more economic development or things like that. So it's a, it's, everything is tangled together and we can't do adequate pushes for more, for more um, uh, companies without being able to put the resources into economic development, which also comes from your tax dollars. So it's, it's all a, a integrated process, but I do, I would love to sit down and talk with you about economic development, all of the things that are involved in economic development and how we are working, all three of us, in different ways to ensure that we have a sound economic development strategy um, moving forward. Thank you, Commissioner. And, and again, thank you to Ms. Turner. Uh, listen, we welcome the citizen involvement and citizen engagement here in Rockdale County. In fact, we believe that that was the whole spark that, that stimulated the idea for the uh, Government Citizens Academy. Mm -hmm. Because citizens just like Ms. Turner, who are tuned in, who are paying attention, who want to have a clear understanding, we welcome that. And I do appreciate Commissioner Washington extending an opportunity for Ms. Turner to come see her, sit down, chop it up a little bit, and talk about uh, how all of this works internally. I would also encourage you, Ms. Turner, to get ahead of the curve and put your name in for the 2022 uh, Government Citizens Academy. And what that will afford to you is an opportunity to go behind the scenes and get a better understanding department by department of how county government actually operates. It really educates and informs our citizenry so now they have a better understanding of what we're doing up here and how it all works behind the scenes. You really can't see that during a board meeting. Uh, you're, getting, you're getting updates and status reports, but you got to really do a deep dive and get involved to really have a better understanding, and an intelligent understanding as to what happens at the clerk's office, what happens at finance and transportation and how we do this. We are not, I want to clear this up too, we are not expecting or anticipating any more CARES money, any more ARPA money. We don't know what the, the federal government, and for that, hell, they don't know what they're going to do. If you've been paying attention, the federal government don't know what they're going to do. So what Rockdale County has to do is take care of the people based upon our coffers here and what's happening. We would love, I'd love to see a Whole Foods, Trader Joe's, Krispy Kreme, 
Dave and Buster, Andres. I'd like to see a several million dollar company set up shop right here in Rockdale County. Hold your thought, Commissioner. Let me just say this. They don't call us, we don't call ourselves Rockdale County for nothing. <laughs> you ever try digging in your backyard? Guess what's there? Rock. We are a valley, and a lot of people don't tell this part of the story, but this community is the valley of Stone Mountain. Lithonia and Rockdale is a valley of the original Stone Mountain. That's why there's so much rock here. Um, there's portions in the north side, Commissioner, you know this, and in the south side, mm -hmm. that uh, people are operating off of septic tanks. Right. In fact, the Publix grocery store, at Highway 138 and 212, are operating off uh, septic tanks because we can't get sewer going in those areas. We'd have to dynamite the whole county, blow up the whole county just to move some of the rock and be able to build. When companies start thinking about moving into any community, Rockdale, Atlanta, New York, Miami, Chicago, LA, the first thing they do is call a feasibility study. They want to determine, based upon the demographics of people, if they set up the shop, past the ribbon cutting, past the first 90 to 120 days, will it be sustainable? All the money they've invested, will it be able to sustain their years and years to come? She made a very valid point. The more of the right, educated, income, taxpayers we get moving into the county adds to the possibility and the potential of us being able to attract a lot of those things that I just mentioned that all of us like. We want to do everything we can in this community to avoid, help you avoid having to travel westbound on I-20 to go down for a nice meal or arts and culture or entertainment. We want to be able to have those amenities, quality of life amenities, right here in our own backyard. We've made some strides. We're making some strides. We're not there yet. Um, Commissioner. Um, the other thing that um, a lot of businesses or corporations look at when they're looking to come to Rockdale County is corporate taxes. And one of the things that we have that is unusual in the state is the host. So for tax pay for the homeowners and residents that have the host credit, that's amazing, that's great. But, but because the millage rate um, is a little bit higher here than in neighboring counties because of the host, it's not exactly um, welcoming when other Corporations look at the the their the millage rate here as opposed to next door or whatever. So that's another thing that we have to take in consideration is that we do have the host, and that is something that we applaud and we want to keep for the residents. But when um, businesses look at it, it's not necessarily the best thing. So we have a few incentives that we can do for it to help with the, with that, but not a lot. So it, there's so many things that go along to business recruitment. It's just not us saying that we want Microsoft here and let's go get them. It's, there's a lot of things that we have to put in place. But we've been working hard to do a lot of things. This is a very good conversation. We've got to move forward. Yes. I will just say that um, I always like to encourage, uh, we get calls and texts all the time. People stop by the office all the time. And uh, several times folks have come this year with their tax bill in hand. Mm -hmm. And uh, because people sometimes just don't really understand all of what they're looking at. So I always encourage folks in Rockdale County, if you would go down to the bottom right corner of your tax bill, it's there on everybody's bill. There are three entities in this community. The Rockdale County Board of Commissioners, the City of Conyers, and the Rockdale public school system. When you go down to the right corner, you'll look at the highest number and you'll see which entity you're paying that number to. We're the only government entity in the county that has a public access television channel where people can actually watch this broadcast and see that we'll be transparent about everything that happens. Now, the other two entities, they do have a city council meeting at the city of Conyers. They do have a board of education meeting at the board, at the school board. But very few people tune in, very people, few people attend, because we have Channel 23, and the county is the most dominant government. Most people are watching and paying attention to what we're doing. 
However, if you look at that bill again, you'll see where the bulk of your money is going in terms of local taxes. We want to educate and inform our citizens so they'll be aware of what's really going on. Um, somebody said to me years ago uh, as, a, as a middle school kid, you mm. an educator, I heard a teacher say, you can't be wrong and loud, Nesbitt. <laughs> <laughs> You can be wrong, but you can't be loud. <laughs> so, so, so if you're gonna if you're gonna get, if you're gonna get the math if you're gonna get the math wrong, don't be don't be loud about it. You know. <laughs> so, so we want to encourage, we want to educate our citizens so they will know. And again, the Citizen Government Academy is a fantastic way to get a better understanding behind the scenes of what really goes on in county government because oftentimes people formulate their own opinion and they come up with these thoughts or they hear other people and sometimes other folks sound like they know what they're talking about but they don't have a clue. Mm -hmm. I'm moving forward. <laughs> <laughs> And I could just picture you as a middle school student. In yes, my yes, I was loud <laughs> and often wrong. <laughs> but I had old school teachers who didn't have any problems saying, Nesbitt, you can't be wrong and loud. <laughs> so I learned the hard way. All right, Director Rutledge, what's next? Okay, so we don't have any more public comment for the budget public hearing. We can close this portion out and move on to the work session. Okay. All right. Good. And we don't have any special recognitions or presentations today. Okay. All right, so if we're ready to move into agenda review, I will um, get started. Yes, go right ahead. Okay, thank you. So item 568 is with the U.S. Department of Justice Bureau of Justice Assistance, the BGA. This is to the Sheriff's Office. This is for license plate readers implementation grant in the amount of $14,399. The term is October 1st, 2020 through September 30th, 2022. Item 569 is with the Bureau of Justice Assistance, the BGA through the Sheriff's Office. This is for the Bulletproof Vest Grant in the amount of $42,266.50 and it's through August 31st, 2023. Item 570 is with the Atlanta Regional Commission through General Services Department, the Senior Services Division. This is for the Consolidation Appropriations Act grant for home delivered meals in the amount of $35,342. The term is October 1st, 2021 through June 30th, 2022. Item 571 is for the Partnership for Community Action Incorporated through the General Services Department and the Senior Services Division. This is the Memorandum of Understanding to become a partner in the Low Income Energy Assistance Program. The term is November 11th, 2021 through June 30th, 2022, and it's at no cost. Item 572 is with Libby Freeman through the General Services Department Senior Services Division. This is instructor for line dancing classes at the Olivia, at the Olivia Haydale Senior Center. It's a 70% up to $1,500. The term is January 1st, 2022 through December 31st, 2022, with the option to renew two additional one-year periods. Can I make a comment about this? So I've taken some of the line dancing oh classes with the seniors. And when I tell you they put me to shame, and I'm a line that dancer, not as good as Tony, uh, oh, Director wow. Holmes, but it is so much fun, and those ladies really, really, really line dance. So if you ever want to have a treat, and and you have to, I mean, they they work up a sweat, <laughs> but be ready because if you if you go down there and you are <laughs> thinking gosh. that it's you're just gonna you know piddle around, you're gonna work, right? You're going to be sore the next morning. It is a great line dance, and I'm I'm looking forward to to doing this again. All right. Right. Well, um, as an added bonus, if you sign up for the Citizens Academy class for Director's Homes Night, then you get to dance as well. Don't you don't see that coming. <laughs> You're not um, supposed to tell it. That's supposed to be one of those hidden. <laughs> I'd like people to be prepared. <laughs> Very good. Okay. Item 573 is with United Maintenance Incorporated through the General Services Department. This is for the courthouse chiller replacement in the amount of $431,871. And it's uh, take about six months and it's ARPA funded. 
And that's one of those things that mm -hmm. keeps coming up over yes. and over mm -hmm. is, and this is this is nearly a half a million dollars. It is a half just, a million dollars. That we just yes. keep mm -hmm. to the courthouse. putting in band-aids on our buildings. Expensive band-aids. Expensive band-aids. So, yes. Just wanted to point that out. Mm -hmm. yes. Thank you. <laughs> Item 574 is with Metro Waterproofing Incorporated through the General Services Department. This is for the auditorium improvements. It's change order number one to contract 2021-90. This is for the additional services at an additional cost of $14,797. It's a ratification and it's host funded. And that's what all that stuff is, you, that, all that excavation you see outside is is this piece of it yes <laughs> item 575 is with summit fire and security llc through the general services department this is for the fire extinguishers inspections this is change order number one to contract 2019-138 it's the name change from protec fire protection llc to summit fire and security llc okay. item 576 is with future street productions llc through the General Services Department. This is for filming of Lyle, Lyle Crocodile at court, the courthouse in the amount of $5,300 revenue. The term was October 22nd, 2021 through October 25th, 2021, and it's a ratification. So I did a little nosing, and I'll say it that way, uh, Executive Director Sanders, commissioners. Uh, Lyle, Lyle Crocodile was filmed at the Rockdale County Courthouse. Mm -hmm. And I went over one day just nosing around. Mm -hmm. And I actually had a chance to talk to the producer. Oh, okay. And I asked the question. I, I really wanted to know. I said, what was the number one reason you chose the Rockdale County Courthouse? Madam Clerk, you're going to love this. And you know what she said to me? Oh. Sir, your courthouse was built in 1939. Mm -hmm. She said it made a perfect setting and venue for this type of movie. Mm -hmm. uh, we, you know where our courthouse is on the uh, historic register, mm -hmm. uh, built in 1939. Mm -hmm. uh, all of the money, I think back up here on item 2021 573 mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, for the courthouse chiller. I just want to reemphasize, Commissioner Williams did, did it a moment ago, but it's $431,871. We're spending that kind of money. It might be good for the film and movie industry, they come to Rockdale, and we're not going to tear the building down. It's going to stay there. It's on the National Register okay, of exactly. Historic Bu Buildings, yeah. so it's not going anywhere. But it doesn't serve the 2021 purpose. There's no ADA compliance, and based upon where it needs to be, we're out of court space. We got a new court, a new judge coming. There's no way, to, nowhere to put that person. No court, no more courtrooms. We are completely out of space. Yes. And I just wanted to point that out because I think there's another example of people not knowing it and, and someone says well y'all keep it so nice and clean but what else we're supposed to do it's supposed to be <laughs> but, clean but with that <laughs> so even though it's nice and clean there's a section of the roof that i heard that is that is caving in now and now Chief we have office, a, remember his office over there yeah, it fell right. in uh, luckily he wasn't at work that day when he was over at the courthouse it he comes right, right in there on on his office yeah so it, it's clean, but that's the minimum. I mean, that's the minimum well, that it's supposed to be is clean. Uh, never mind. We could go all day with courthouse yes. reasons. The name of the movie was Loud Loud Crocodile. <laughs> I just want to make sure y'all. This is kind of so I, I can't wait to watch. I, I really want to see. Yeah, that's, that's, see I, I'm going to watch Loud Loud Crocodile. No. I'm going to bring you one of KJ's Loud Loud Crocodile books. Wow. All right. Next item, please. <laughs> I get to say it again. That's kind of fun to say. Item 577 <laughs> is with Future Street Productions LLC through the General Services Department. This is for parking at American Legion Field Park, Fields 2 and 3 for Lyle Lyle Crocodile. And the term was October 22nd, 2021, and it's a ratification. Okay. Item 578 is with author Des Moines Kenny doing business as Kids Acting Academy through the General Services Department and the Recreation Division. 
This is for acting classes at Johnson Park Recreation Center. It's a 70-30 split in the amount of $2,500. The term is January 1st, 2022 through December 31st, 2022, with an option to renew two additional 12-month periods. So it's only children's acting? Yeah. Um, did you want to sign up for that too? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we could probably. I'm sorry. It's beginner, so I could just be oh. with the six year olds. KJ and I could take this together. Oh my gosh. Learn to be loud, loud crocodile. Okay, item 579 is with author Des Moines Kenny in the coroner's office. This is deputy coroner on as needed basis to handle coroner calls, $175 per call. One year with unlimited 12 month auto renewals unless terminated. So I'm sorry, the same person that's doing the acting is doing I'd the like to, re to defer to executive <laughs> director Mark Lewis who <laughs> brought this to my attention earlier in the week. And um, he said, I want you to be prepared, Director Rutledge, when you start reading this out, that this is the same person and it's not a mistake. I said, thank you. It is not an error that this is the same person who... Uh, I guess he has to have a, something to balance it out. Uh, uh, has, serves as a backup coroner in case we need him, but he also does um, some work with children's acting as well. <laughs> same thing. So, so I was, we I was uh, prepped ahead of time. <laughs> said, I know that you have to read these out loud. And I don't want you to stumble. I'm like, you know, I would. So, so have we had a deputy coroner before? Oh yeah. yes. yes, yes, we yeah. have okay. a few of them. Okay. I just didn't know if the need was greater or. I just don't know if we've had one that's done acting classes before. <laughs> I can't verify that. So. Let me see. It has a captive audience. Oh Lord. Oh my gosh, okay, we're almost uh, there, y'all. Next All item, right. please. 580 is with <laughs> Tyler Technologies Incorporated through the Clerk of Courts Office. This is for the Odyssey SAAS. This change order number five to contract 2019-149. This is to add an additional license for Judge's Edition software and it's additional $4,590. So my question on that one is, is this anticipating the new judge so that we need another license for that software that is correct. okay thank you thank you item 581 is with techwell services llc through the water resources department this is for the high service pumps one and two and the rebuild it's in the amount of ninety eight thousand nine hundred seventy two dollars and it will take 120 days Item 582 is with Worldscapes LLC through the Water Resources Department. This is for the lawn maintenance at the water treatment plant and the tank sites in the amount of $26,582.40 annually. This is one year with option to renew two additional one year periods. And Mr. Chairman and Board, the next three rezoning items, the rezoning case 2021-18, 17, and 16, all of the applicants have requested more time in, in which to speak to the neighborhoods and possible uh, amendments to their zoning applications. So next week, I will be recommending to the board that all of these items go back through the public hearing process. Oh, this is wonderful. I really appreciate yes. it when developers uh, want to take more time to talk to the uh, residents and the people that's going to be impacted by the development. So this is great news. We've always talked, Commissioner, about the developers talking to the people absolutely okay. so we could so what will happen is next week although i will be reading them into the record uh we will be requesting through the planning department and also my recommendation that you vote formally vote to send it back through the okay. public hearing process since yes. we won't have another zoning public hearing until january okay all right very good well that's in their favor it gives them yes. more time absolutely Commissioners, okay. any comments on that one? No. Okay, all right. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And item 586 are the requests for alcoholic beverage licenses. Item 587 is a resolution of the Board of Commissioners of Rockdale County, Georgia, approving a private activity bond transaction to assist in financing the terraces at Fieldstone, an $83 million, approximately 316 multifamily housing rental development located in Rockdale County. 
This is a TEFRA, and this is a request on behalf of the Rockdale County Development Authority. So I just, um, the Development Authority just met this morning and approved this through the Development Authority. The, um, peop the board members and the CEO of the company actually gave a presentation and it was so impressive mm. that I asked them to come next week to present to you all so that you can see the kinds of things that they were going to be doing in the community with this bond and so that the community can see the kinds of things that they're going to be doing in the community with this bond. I think that you all are going to be highly impressed because I was very, very impressed with this um, opportunity. And so my understanding when I was reading through the documentation, this does not hold the county liable for That's anything. Correct. No. that um, it's handled entirely by the development oh, authority yeah. that we are not right. we just because it's in the county we have to approve it right because but but there is no obligation on that part financially right very good okay all right Next thank slide. you item 588 is an ordinance to make and provide appropriations for the period beginning january 1st 2022 and ending december 1st December 31st, 2022, to make and provide such appropriations for the operations of the Rockdale County government, its departments, boards, and other agencies and funds, including all elected official, including all elected county officers and their employees to provide for the control and administration of all funds of such agencies from all sources to provide an effective date to repeal conflicting ordinances and resolutions and for other purposes. Next. Tuesday, you will have this as a first reading okay. on your agenda. This is the uh, first reading of the 2022 appropriations ordinance. All right. Item 589 is a requisition through the Water Resources Department through Delta Municipal. This is for the water meter e coders for the AMI project in the amount of $796,500. Item 590 is a requisition through the Water Resources Department for Strategic Datacom. These are for cameras to purchase an installation in the amount of $33,448.77. Item 591 is a requisition through the Stormwater Management Utility Department. This is for HERC rentals. It's a rental of a dump truck in the amount of $19,050. Item 592 is a requisition through Stormwater Management. This is for the for Terminus Municipal Advisors. This is for financial advisory services in the amount of $78,000 per year. Item 593 is a requisition through Rockdale County Fire and Rescue for Fire Line. This is for a Quint Ladder Truck in the amount of $776,638. This is SPLOS and Impact Fee funded. I know so which, oh, which uh, fire station does this go to? It's going to locate out of station one. Oh, okay. Once it comes in, we're located out of station one to station one until we can get station 10 up and building up and ready to go and then it will move there. And a great thing about this is that this operates as an engine and a ladder. So whereas we would be buying two pieces of equipment to do job at the same price, we're getting one, we're getting two for one. But this is this is just the truck and the ladder. This isn't all the bells and whistles. It's a pumper. It's right. a, it does exactly. everything. Oh. It's two apparatus in one. Okay. Whereas you would have an engine and a separate truck, you have it in one. That apparatus can shoot water, can raise a ladder, mm. it can play the siren, everything that you like. <laughs> <laughs> Don't be telling my secrets. <laughs> you have to paint the picture there, Chief. Yeah, that's what you said. Yeah, yeah. 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 Do you teach the acting classes as well? Yeah, I do. Okay, all right. Yeah, I do, yeah. I'm sounding. Can we hear that siren one more time? <laughs> 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 You got it, Commissioner. I got it. I'm, I'm tracking. Oh, hey. All righty. Oh, my. Okay. Well, we're, we're still going. Okay. Mm. <laughs> Item 594 is an expenditure request for RDJE Incorporated through the Water Resources Department. This is for an emergency 24-inch water main repair in the amount of $22,860.13. So I have a question on that one. Um, it says that the contractor hit the water main. Oh. 
So why is the contractor not responsible for that? Well, typically what happens, uh, the contractor is responsible. But because we can't wait on the contractor to get in there and keep our water line moving, we have to go ahead and do an immediate repair. But they will be getting the bill. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Yes, All right. ma'am. Thank you. Um, if we wait on the, if we go through the processes with the contractor, waiting on the check to come, water be going everywhere. We be, you know. So we have to go ahead and fix the line. But we certainly uh, send the contractor the bill. Thank you. That's yes, good news. <laughs> Thank you. Item 595 is an expenditure request to the tax commissioner's office. This is for Peach State Assistance. This is for the delinquent notice fees for September 2021 in the amount of $30,388.45. Do we, uh, Executive Director mm -hmm. Reynolds, do you have, you or the Chief Cave have any knowledge of whether we have a list of who these individuals are from the tax commissioner? I don't want the list announced. I just like to see that list of who these people might be. There is a list. Okay. We could get that for you. Please get mm -hmm. that for me. Sure. So are we saying there's 30,000 in delinquent in outstanding mm -hmm. tax bills? Um, that's what we're paying Peach State Assistance. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I don't know oh, how we're much paying is them that the, much. Yeah. But the, right. the collection amount could be larger. It could. Okay. Yeah. I'm not sure what the collection amount is. But we right. can definitely get that's that. That's typically how it works. Okay. They get a percentage of whatever they Well, that, that's what for. I thought, that they usually got a percentage. That's correct. So are they, they're not collecting 21 tax, delinquent taxes. They're um, collecting 2020 delinquent they taxes. They could be 2020, 2019, 2018. Yes, it could okay. be a whole collage of... Because 21 uh, taxes aren't delinquent not yet. yet. That's correct. Not okay. yet. You tracking also. <laughs> I mean, I know. Uh, All right, good job, good job, very good. And item 596 is a request to surplus equipment from talent management department and the finance department. Okay. All right. Well, commissioners, that pretty much takes care of agenda review for um, the next meeting. At this time, Director Relich, we're down to public comment. And I don't have any red cards this morning. I'm sorry. So let me ask you, Ms. Turner. Look, let, let me ask you, hang on, with, I'm going to work with you because I'm always really gracious with this public comment thing. I like people to speak. But look, I know that the commissioner has extended an opportunity uh, for you to talk candid and one-on-one -on -one with her. Is it something that you... Come on up. Come on up to the podium. Yes, ma'am. Come on up, Miss Turner. Absolutely. Come on up. <laughs> um, I took some notes here. Um, you mentioned that the um, those uh, rezoning um, are on hold and they're coming out to the res residents. Submit my name. I'm in the Stanton Road uh, development or where they want to rezone. But um, I had a question about the e coders. Does that have, if for the meters, does that have anything to do with them being able to read the meters um, in-house instead of sending meter readers out so that we can get this water bill, you know, together? Yes, ma'am. And you're tracking as well. So <laughs> let me, let, I'm so glad you brought that up. It, it has everything to do with it. So okay. here's what we're going to. We're going to a automatic, uh, we've, been, we've been transitioning our system to a computer read, radio read program. Mm -hmm. It will reduce the number of people we have to have out in the field, in the street. We're not there just yet. It will allow for a computer to pick up the information and gather the data and be able to determine who's using what amount of water on a monthly basis. Once we get this completely installed, we'll be able to revamp our whole department of, in terms of customer service and water with our meter reader division mm -hmm. in terms of the number of employees, whether we shift them to another area. First thing we got to do is get it completely installed, 100%, give it a test period. And I'm going to tell you, it's going to take a good bit of time to do a test period to make sure, as you know about computers, they sometimes they have a mind of their own. We want to make sure that this, these, absolutely, this technology is working properly before we just completely release it and do away with our, our, our staff who's doing uh, meter read. So this is an improvement. It will bring the level of efficiency for the ratepayers to the standard that you expect. Absolutely. 
Yes. But can I count it? Did you see the price? The price tag on that was seven hundred and ninety-six thousand dollars. Right. That's your you not tax money. Asking that from us too. <laughs> That, that, are you saying all of this is, you know, this is what I'm understanding. These are tax dollars. All this proposal which you're spending is tax dollars. Or from coming from your, tax and your, the enterprise fund. Yes, ma'am. These are what you pay for. You're paying for the improvements. Whenever we upgrade or we implement improvements in the county, that's what the taxpayers are paying for. And we seriously need to have a talk because I need to understand it because you're getting money from other sources. And so I'm not. What other sources? Well, um, we mentioned the CARES Act that you got. This is so the CARES off. Act, we only got $3 million, okay. and most of that went to pay public safety for all of the overtime and things like that that they had to put in when they, when they went to, um, when, when they were dealing with the pandemic in the pandemic. All of, we had our frontline workers, most of that money went to pay for those things, for CARES Act. Mm -hmm. When we got ARPA funds, we do have a list of ARPA funds, but a lot of that went to, uh, a lot of that is, we, we, was it almost $3 million is going to, to close up the gap that we have for taking the rollback rate, and the rollback rate is what we use to level out your taxes. Mm -hmm. So when we, we have, it's not like we have all this money. We are doing a lot of, um, of things for the community, um, and we are putting money that we wouldn't have otherwise to pay for a few things in the county, but it's not like we have all this money and, and the, the citizens don't get to pay for it. But that $796, some $796,000, is that enterprise right. fund or is that general the fund? Those costs in his budget. Is, well, I'm sorry. It's, it's, it's okay, enterprise. Okay, so enterprise fund, that means that that's what you pay for your water and things like that. So you're still paying for it, mm -hmm. your water. So we had a, a rate increase, things like that, to be able to modernize the system. Mm -hmm. Those are the things that, you pays, that we get to pay for or we have to pay for in order to have a modern system. And you're paying for that in, when you pay your water bill. Okay. But but I I don't think people when when they see us go through these these things on the agenda mm -hmm. I don't think they correlate these with their taxes or their their bills we still have to pay for it you you come, came and complained this is I think the, the second or third time don't that say I complained no, no well <laughs> brought a concern about yes um, the the water rate mm -hmm. and, and the the bills but we have to in order to modernize our technology there's a cost involved and this is how it's paid for okay my other thing we, we can really seriously need to have a sit down because i'm thinking i understand tax dollars but i understand that the county gets monies from the state let me help with that please. so so miss turner we we are going to have to have a, a really deep okay. dive sit down let me give a, a point of clarity for you because i do want to make sure as you exit the building in this meeting this morning you understand a couple of things number one there's no more cash money cares money that that money's gone uh opera money is just about complete okay uh we don't know what the federal government is going to do whether they're going to be giving any extra money or new money or not we don't know the county operates off of property taxes and sales taxes. Mm -hmm. People who own homes and businesses, they pay property taxes. Mm -hmm. We constantly ask and encourage our citizens to shop local. When you spend your hard-earned dollars here, you're spending money in our community and those sales uh, taxes that we collect, that we get every year back into the county help us pay for fire trucks, police cars, roads, parks and rec. That's, there is no other mystery pot. The county doesn't have a rainbow flow of money somewhere. We get the money based upon the citizens who work here, uh, who live here. And uh, in terms of the enterprise fund, it's a business. It's a business, just like any other business. So you pay your water bill, uh, that money offsets. It doesn't pay completely, but it offsets a good portion of the maintenance and the operation on our water system, which includes personnel, equipment, 
uh, and this climate that the commissioner was alluding to earlier, this whole pandemic has everything. If you try ordering things for Christmas, you better go ahead and put your order in because it may be January by the time you get it. Everything is on delay. Uh, construction materials and costs are extremely high. So the county has to deal with the same thing that a person going over to Home Depot. We do it on a, on a larger scale. That's, that was the example she used about the fuel costs. So just know that there is no more CARES money. That was a one-time thing that happened under the Trump administration. The Biden administration has given us ARPA funds. That's almost over, too. We don't know what they're going to do. So I just want to make sure you understand that we operate Rockdale County based upon the contribution of all of our citizens on a day-to-day -day basis with property taxes and sales taxes. That's how we pay employees. That's how the, we have to pay the light bill. They don't, we get a bill. <laughs> so right. a, we don't get to get lights and water free because we're Rockdale County well, government. Yeah, I understand that. Yeah. So, so I have a question. Is this um, proposed budget, is this on, available online? So we have the proposed ordinance that's available online. Um, we can add the presentation if you want to add okay. the presentation. I think you should add the presentation. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. 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 Direct the and copies because be that sure. is another Go ahead and give her a concern. I think this that we all should be able to see that that budget. This you know, page this. shows you all all the sources of revenue that the mm -hmm. county has. Okay. Pro property taxes, the host sales tax. Charges for services, mm -hmm. fines and forfeitures, ARPA money this time, mm -hmm. and then people applying for licenses and permits. That's it. Okay. Right. There's that, no that's, state funds. That's where our funding comes from. There's nothing from the state, nothing from the federal government. Usually. This year yeah. we do have the ARPA funds, but we're using that money to close up the gap in the in what in, in the and in what what we need and what we'll have. I was so afraid she was say roll back. <laughs> so we did roll back. But she I doesn't, know, but she, I she doesn't understand mind. that, right? Okay. She we'll so we'll talk why. about it. Okay. When y'all so have one-on-one -on -one okay. and make sure you bring okay. up the speed and on this that. this is the last thing. Yes, ma'am. Water drain and that they uh, owe that will come back into the funds. We're taking this, this is accounted for in the funds for the, repair. But when we get it back, does that add back into the budget? Yes. Yes. The water main break? Yes. Yes. Okay. It, yes. We'll pay for it, and then it will go back into and our fund. You can't put that in the Yes. Budget. Okay. We're just okay. fronting okay. it to get yeah. the repair That's done. I'm going to watch how you spend it. Then. Thank you. All right. Thank you. All righty. All right. Now we're down to board comment, I believe. Starting with Commissioner Washington. I think I've commented <laughs> a lot. <laughs> um, first thing, um, on Thursday, uh, we do have the um, small business um, uh, credit, um, maintaining, obtaining and maintaining small business credit. It is at Costly Mill. I think there's only like one or two spots left. Those are four Rockdale County businesses um, trying to um, in economic development, there's a whole lot of things that um, uh, people look at when they're looking to choose Rockdale County. A lot of people don't know that they look at the credit scores of the the community, but um, right now we're not focusing on individual credit, but business credit is very is something that I really want our small businesses to have healthy business credits because that helps our economy. Um, Overall, so we're doing the small business credit, obtaining and maintaining small business credit. I think we have maybe two or three spots left. Um, you can contact me if you want one of those two or three spots left, but that's going to be Thursday from 6 to 8 p.m. at Costly Mill. Um, our small business mixer every second Tuesday from 6 to 9 at uh, the Reserve, which is a restaurant here in Rockdale County. Um, we are doing small business mixers. Come bring your business cards um, and a good time. We had a very good time. The last business mixer, Kevin Hanna, who is the president and CEO of the Conyers Rockdale County Economic Development Council, he will be here for that business mixer. That will be on the 9th. Um, he was, we will be talking about um, small businesses in Rockdale County and kind of our vision with Cretsey 
um, moving forward. I'm looking forward to that. Also, that segues into the um, the uh, initiative that I am having with um, National Children's Month. National Children's Day is November the 20th. Um, in recognition of National Children's Day, I am hosting a luggage drive um, for children in defects custody. Um, I really want to collect a whole lot of luggage for these children while, because often the children in defense custody, they put their clothes in trash bags and they have to move from place to place with trash bags. So I would like for them to have a little bit of dignity, have um, luggage. Like I said, Chairman, please do not bring me the luggage that you moved to college with. I would like new or gently used luggage. If you would like to bring it to the mixer, you can do that. Or you can bring it to the BOC building. Um, but I will be donating those to um, DFAS actually November 19th um, for that initiative. The vaccine initiative, that will be November the 4th. Um, we are providing $50 gift cards for people to become vaccinated, Rockdale County residents. That will be at the health department. That is ARPA funded. Um, 50, I'm, I'm sorry, November 6th and December 4th, but it's November 6th. Thank you very much. At the health department, um, $50 gift cards. Thank you for um, all of everybody, the finance department, um, all of the organizations. Um, uh, PR, everybody that has helped get this um, initiative up and going. You think it's going to be easy until you have to have 25 um, Zoom meetings and um, 35 rewrites of the of the um, the um, what is that? The, the flyer. Flyer and everything. So it's very, um, it was a lot more than I, I bargained for, but I'm glad to do it. And I hope that we have a great turnout. We're at 44% in Rockdale County of unvaccinated. And that's a huge percentage. Um, we've got to get vaccinated if we want to get out of this pandemic, you all. Mm -hmm. So please come. We are hoping this incentive it will help. Um, it's anybody 12 and older that is a Rockdale County resident will be uh, eligible for the gift cards. Um, and like I said, we do have a host of community organizations that are helping to promote and will be there on the 6th from 9 to 4 um, at the vaccination giveaway. And I think that I have everything. All right. Wow. Okay, Commissioner Williams. <laughs> so as far as vaccines, yesterday I was at Publix um, to, just to see if you had to have an appointment to get a vaccine shot and um, because I'm looking to get my booster this week. And she said, well, if you want, don't want to wait for an hour, then yes, you need an appointment. So I thought, well, that's good news because this didn't look like people that were in that age category that were eligible right now for that booster shot. So hopefully they were getting their first or second shot. Um, hopefully those numbers are going up for Rockdale County. Um, just two conferences I wanted to talk about this weekend. Um, Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday, uh, I, there's a Georgia Community Service Board mm -hmm. Association conference at Lake Lanier, which I'll be attending as a mm -hmm. board member of Viewpoint Health, and I'm also part of the uh, Georgia CSB policy, bo state policy committee. Mm -hmm. um, that should be, I, I always look forward to those because there's always lots of good information mm -hmm. and you learn something new every time you go. Um, and then uh, then next week, at the end of the week, is our ACCG conference, and that's the, the, same, um, the same idea. I always learn something new. I always learn something that I can Absolutely. bring back and implement here. And um, so, you know, that's, um, I'm, I'm excited about those opportunities. I had a uh, citizen contact me this week about a suicide prevention or crisis intervention program for county employees for our mm -hmm. county. So um, 
I, I think that would be something that would come out of talent management, but I think that's maybe something that, I, well, not maybe, I think we need to be thinking about that. Um, September was Suicide Prevention Awareness Month, and um, it's an ongoing kind of thing. Mm -hmm. We know that it hits families of all, you know, mm -hmm. all socioeconomic levels, all race. I mean, it's, there's there's no discrimination with it, and um, but it is preventable if if we are on top of it. And, um, and then obviously family members that are left behind need support. And if there are our, uh, employees, we need to be able to have something in place mm -hmm. to, to be able to support them. Those are my comments. All right, Commissioner Washington, any additional? No. Okay, all right. I uh, just want to remind everybody that we're moving into the time of the year where the time is about to change. You're going to be falling back with your calendar and your clock, so uh, basically with your clock. Uh, also, that, all, that reminds me, make mention of what I mentioned the last time. As we move into an early, darker hour uh, here, we want to remind everybody to be safety conscious and safety alert, be aware from a security standpoint as you're moving across parking lots, shopping, and doing all this is the time of the year when shopping picks up and people are out spending more money and eating and moving about. But so is the criminal element. People are lurking. The, the, the criminal is, is his or her job to be lurking, paying attention to us as we're loading things in the trunk of our cars and moving across. Uh, it, it could be a loaded parking lot full of people at any one of the shopping centers. Somebody walk up to you with a gun and no one else sees, they'll never know that you're actually being robbed right in the middle of everybody out there. So you have to be alert. I'm making mention to this because you have to be alert. And let me just say this. The criminal element is not limited to people that's 40 and older. Sometimes, uh, if you're watching the news around Metro Atlanta, a lot of the young folks are doing some crazy things. So just be alert. I, my name is not pss, 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 or hey mister, that's not my name. And if you don't know my name, I'm not turning my head and paying attention to it. I'm going to keep it moving. So I'm just saying that be alert as you move about. I'm a man, and I'm still alert. So I know for our women folks, I've said to my wife and daughters, you've got to be extra alert and paying attention at the gas pump when you're pumping gas. Some of the most passive places in the community that you don't think about, you have to be alert. We've seen on a national scale of what has happened in some of our local churches. You have to be alert at church. So this is a time of year from a security standpoint, Chief K, that we really uh, have to really make sure we remind folks to be a little bit more alert and cautious. So the vocabulary word for that is circumspect. Circumspect. Oh, All right. Uh, okay. I'm so glad I got an educator sitting to the left of me up here. I'm so glad I got an educator sitting up here to the left of me. Give me that word one more time, teacher. Circumspect. Like, circumspect. All right. The word of Very the day good. is? Circumspect. Very good. Okay. And that reminds me, uh, Executive Director Holmes, that we've got Toastmasters coming up on this Thursday at noontime at J.P. Carr. So anyone that's interested in sprucing up like I am, sprucing up your uh, effective communication skills and delivery skills, you can meet us over there at 12 noon at 981 Taylor Street for Toastmasters. I, I, as long as I've been in the speaking business, I still go to Toastmasters because I need to brush up and improve all the time. So that's going to happen Thursday at 12 noon over at um, 981 uh, Taylor Street at the J.P. Carr Community Center. I do want to remind everybody that the turkey drive for our senior citizens is well underway. Uh, Commissioner Washington was asking about the actual giveaway, which is going to take place on Sunday, November the 14th, over at the Olivia Haydale uh, Center. We will be handing out the turkeys. You don't have to get out of your vehicle. We've got an excellent drive through situation set up. You pop the truck, we're going to put the turkey in there. I will say this to folks. We need your help. We need turkeys. There is a deficit with turkeys. So if you can't afford, if you can afford to pick up an extra turkey, we ask that you do that. We've got some senior citizens who are certainly on a fixed income, and they can certainly use that turkey as we move into our 13th annual senior citizen turkey drive. So 
Yeah. We're we're pleading this year, to be honest with you, that uh, there is a deficit. Where do you drop it off? I'm glad you asked. 1636 Dogwood Drive at Courtesy Ford on Dogwood uh, Drive there. There's a, a cooler, big deep freezer on the showroom floor at the dealership. You can take that turkey and drop it in over there. Man, so. I went to get to look for my turkey for the giveaway. And my turkey, I need a GPS tracking device because I'm going to have to have dinner with whoever gets the turkey because <laughs> they're so expensive. You're going to have that dinner with your turkey recipient. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, but, but you will get. I will. I am committing right. to two turkeys, but good luck. <laughs> right, <laughs> right. And, and we make a little light of it, but there is a true turkey deficit. It's all over the news, says, uh, and the cost of the turkey is also has increased, and not just the turkey, because one of the news broadcasts talked about not just the bird himself, uh, but all of the trimmings and the fixings. Uh, there's the increase from cranberry sauce to uh, uh, potatoes, sweet potatoes. So all of the stuff this year because of where we are with the uh, pandemic is, I know it's lunchtime, I'm sorry, <laughs> Director Relich. I, uh, you had, as soon as I said that, you start thinking about a pat of the bell sweet potato pie, didn't you? <laughs> okay. Anyway, we need your help. If you can find it inside of you to donate a turkey, we ask that you take it on over to Courtesy Ford and drop it off. Um, I don't want to belabor our meeting. I want to say thank you to, again, to Director Mark Lewis and the finance team and Terminus and all of those who had a hand with getting us to this point. I really want to say an extra thank you to Ms. Corliss Turner for always coming out and being an active participant with our meetings and pushing this board and making sure that we're on the cutting edge hearing from the citizens. We really do appreciate you and I want you to know that. I do encourage you, uh, if you haven't already, to sign up for the 2022 Citizens Government Academy. But but more importantly, get on the calendar with either one of the commissioners, with me, the chairman, or the, either one of the commissioners. We'll be glad to give you more in-depth insight on how things operate. And all of our departments, the tax assessor's office, all of them are open so that you can get a better understanding of, of what's going on. Uh, even uh, Chief Mack, who's sitting there behind you, she has a... Um, uh, uh, every now and then she does a little open house walk through at some of the fire stations starting with the fire headquarters she loved to take you on a tour let you climb up in one of those big red apparatus big fire trucks yeah, and citizen, it, fire citizen fire academy is coming up but in the meantime would you allow her to get in one of the trucks chief Absolutely. so she can see where her money is going Absolutely. okay put on a helmet take you for a ride a helmet. <laughs> And I, I do want to say a thank you to Chief Mack for that siren, a rendition of that siren. Well, I, I wasn't sure when I heard the siren outside if it was coming from outside or if it was coming from Chief Mack. I had to double check. Uh, we, we coming close on our time. Uh, Executive Director Holmes, any comments out of talent management that's pressing? Fantastic. Fantastic. Executive Director Sanders, anything out of general services? No. Okay. Uh, Director uh, Johnson, anything out of planning and development that's pressing? No, sir. Public Relations, Director Gum? Follow us on all social media if you want. <laughs> okay. All right. Chief K? Yes, sir. Okay. Ms. Mims, anything out of the uh, Community Relations Office that we need to be aware of? Okay, thank you. So in addition to uh, Courtesy Forward, you can drop your turkey off right over at the um, uh, Senior Center, Olivia Haydell Senior Center right there in um, Dogwood Drive. What so, age is considered senior? What age is considered senior? Yeah, because I posted it on, on next door and that was a couple of, that was one of the questions. Age. Well, I, you know, I, I don't want to get in trouble with that number because that, that's almost... <laughs> Right. That's almost a We're semi, looking at you side-eyed over here. That's a semi-setup right there. That's, I, I, I've been around enough to know how to detect a setup when I hear one. That, that's a semi-setup. So I hear, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to yield. I'm going to yield to uh, Siri and Google, let you ask them, and, and, and I ask but, that you follow their lead. For our senior center, what is that age? It's 60. 60. 60. 60. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. All right. 
You're so said there the yet. woman sitting up front. <laughs> AARP, it's 55. Yeah, see, that's you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> There's discounts available. Right. And I probably wear my gray. I don't hide it at all. Uh, I've earned every ounce of this gray hair, uh, thanks to the good folks here in Rockdale County and abroad. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Executive Director Rutledge, is there any need for executive session? No, Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Happy Tuesday. This meeting is adjourned.